Hello, welcome back. I'm Sam from the Nth Engine Gamers. This is my Let's Play of City Skylines. You join us now not too long after we left off from the last episode. We're about to unlock our next milestone. So as you can see, we're now a worthy village. This has granted us the ability to buy new land, place districts, policies, second loan, emergency services, police and unique buildings. Also, forestry and agricultural land, which will be very useful on this map. Now I'm just having a quick look through all the unique buildings, seeing what I need to unlock them. I want to try and complete this map. As such, at some point I'm going to have to try and fulfil the requirements, which includes having abandoned buildings, full cemeteries, low employment, all sorts of social and economic disasters. So, as I've unlocked the ability to purchase new land, I think I'm going to choose the area following the river. The reason is, in real world cities, you usually find most civilization on or following a river. Because of the way the game works, you don't really need to do this, but I will for aesthetical purposes. Now, here I'm going to show the real main use for Traffic Manager, and that is changing lanes. As you can see here in the base game, both lanes can go on, but only one can turn left. Now, this isn't so bad right here, but when you start making more complex roundabouts, you can have traffic from an inside lane turning out, blocking traffic that wants to carry on ahead in the left hand lane. Plus, traffic on the inside usually picks whenever it feels to move to the outer lane, which doesn't seem such a big deal, but on busy roads it can cause absolute chaos. So what I'm doing is, between each junction, the outside road can only leave. Then as they leave, the traffic on the inside has the option to stay inside to take a later exit, or move over to the outside to leave on the next road. Though it's slightly different from the average British roundabout, it works on the same basic principle. Vehicles on the roundabout have priority over the vehicles waiting to get on, though there will still be queues to get on, once they are on, they won't be held up any further. We'll be exploring more complex roundabouts further down the line, no doubt.
So here, I'm just wondering why my power plant isn't working. And I realise it's because the road isn't connected properly. I don't know if this is because of the Road Anarchy mod or just a glitch in the game, but it has been happening quite a lot recently. So that's something I have to keep an eye out for in the future. Now that's properly connected, I'm just going to use the new feature added with Mass Transit that shows me the pathing of the AI to see if trucks are now en route to deliver coal to the plant. Which I'll do just after I stop getting distracted by this police car. There we go, and as we can see we now have a truck on its way making a stop at the coal plant. So with any luck, that will arrive quickly, get the power plant working, produce more electricity for the city and we can lower the budget. But more importantly, not rely so much on wind power as this isn't a very windy map. Now a reoccurring thing that you can start to notice here is the in-game traffic managing system fighting against my superior road systems. To my understanding, the way this info panel view works is lots of traffic building up through volume or how long it's been stationary is shown as red. But here we can see my roundabout is shown as red, however, there's not a massive amount of traffic and what traffic there is doesn't even stop. I've made a road system so good the game literally cannot fathom it. We'll see this a lot more often in the future, in particular on roundabouts. Here as well you'll notice I'm just switching through all the info panels just to see if the city here has everything it needs. Good traffic flow, water coverage, fire safety, noise pollution, healthcare and so on. If I spot any problems I'll try and rectify the issue straight away. And by going through the info panels, I've just spotted a very good area for some potential forestry industry later on. Forestry is a good industry to have in this game as it's both renewable and on this map specifically, in abundance.
Now here I'm making a retail park. Though I've been making roads specifically for retail and throwing in blocks of it here and there, I like the idea of random retail parks. What I don't want to have is a huge area and painting it all blue. As, though I could be wrong, this isn't really what you get in real life. So what I'm going to do now is make what I promised, a, for now, very green city with lots of recreational space. Starting now, I've selected an area I would like a park in. I'm going to surround it with a road, fence it off and add some in-game parks, just to add happiness that unfortunately custom recreational areas cannot add. Fortunately, at the minute, the in-game parks will suit the look I'm aiming for. And I've just become a tiny town. This has granted me the ability to landscape, build parks, level 2 buildings and football clubs, a load of new policies, which I'll get into later when I start using them, new paths, canals, keys, flood walls, a high school and a fresh water outlet. Quite a lot of unlocks for that milestone. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Please leave a like, any feedback or comments. I've been Sam from the Nth Engine Gaming, thank you and goodbye.